This is a large model showman's engine part 41, a lot of painting and a bit of lining as a test. The panel that's on screen at the moment is not one I'm going to fit to the engine. This was the first attempt at making a motion guard and I bent it in the wrong place. Then I chopped a bit off to use for something else and I ended up with this piece of metal. This panel is also the wrong colour. The colour match from HMG Paints was not right, as you can see here. I had to buy a couple of tins of Phoenix Precision Paints and have them put into aerosols. And in this clip I'm painting the side rails using an aerosol containing Phoenix Precision Paints. As you can see, it's an entirely different colour to the metal plate previously shown. Thankfully, after a few phone calls, HMG Paints are on the case and are looking into the colour match. Just in case you're wondering, the left hand side rail is not an HMG Paints colour, this is Red Oxide Primer. The trouble with painting outside is the sunlight changes all the time. And small flies land on the thing that you're painting, which is very annoying. But this is only the first of the top coats and I'll be rubbing it down. And when I put the final coat on, I'm going to do that half in and half out of the workshop. In case you're wondering why I changed the position of the side panels, it was so I could paint what will become the underneath edge. When I watch this video footage back, I'm quite alarmed as to how close to my car I am, but it's not as close as it looks. I've speeded up this footage because my lifespan is not long enough to edit it all, and the side panels are looking quite good. As the temperature outside was getting very warm, I took the side panels inside, set up my painting jig on an old Black & Decker workmate, and I'm giving the inside of the first of the motion guards another coat of paint. That's one done. Now it's time to paint the other side. And the other side was also undercoated using the HMG Paints version of LMS Crimson Lake. I mentioned to a man called Josh who phoned me from HMG Paints this morning about the variation in colour of LMS Crimson Lake on some of my model engines. And the HMG version is very similar to the colour of a Hornby 00 Duchess that I have. This is the day after. I omitted the fact that I painted the inside of the motion guards shortly before I painted the outside, as you see here, using Phoenix Precision Paints, but in an auto paint northern can. In case you need to transfer any paint, here's the address of the company who will do it for you. www.autopaintnorthern.co.uk It's Monday the 27th of July 2020, and we're getting through the worldwide pandemic pestilence, and Autopaint Northern have closed their website temporarily. The day after I sprayed the inside and outside of the motion guards, it was time to rub them down. I used 600 grit and 1200 grit wet to dry sandpaper and plenty of water. I'm sure there are many proper painters out there and I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise. Painting is not really my thing. I don't really have enough patience for it. I don't know why, because I'm patient in just about every other area except when I'm painting, I just want to get it done. And spray painting somehow resembles welding to me, and that's another reason why I'm not good at it. I generally get a good end result, though. This is after another coat, which followed the rubbing down that you've just seen. And if you look carefully, you can actually see my face in it. And I'm sorry about this, because it's not a pretty sight. But at least it shows that the finish of the paint is quite good. I haven't polished it, it's straight from the can and provided that flies and other associated debris don't fall on the paint while it's drying, this should be okay. Back now to the test piece. I bought this stuff, it's called J-Tape, which is a very special kind of masking tape. I also have a tin of Primrose Yellow one-shot paint, and the small tin I mix myself, which I showed in a previous video. This masking tape is really difficult to cut. You need a very sharp knife or a very sharp pair of scissors. I went for the knife option, but I changed the blade first. Initially, I'm interested to see whether this masking tape pulls off the previous coat of paint, and thankfully it doesn't appear to be doing so. This panel hasn't been rubbed down much, this is just one coat. Here you see the principle of this special J-tape. For this first test, I've decided to do it this way. There are other permutations that I'll show, because I'm going to put quite a few lines on this piece of metal, but I'm only showing one permutation in this video. In order to arrive at this line thickness, which is very parallel and very accurate, 
I've removed two of the central lines of tape. The only problem is, though, this is a bit too thick. On the next test on this same piece of metal, I'll just remove one line of tape. The thickness of the lining needs to match the lining on the rest of the engine. But this will be OK for the first test. Now it's almost time to try some paint. I also need to paint the edges, so I'm cutting the tape with my Stanley knife, and as you can see it's very sharp, and I'm going to fold all of these pieces down so that it masks the edges. This test is unimportant, so if it goes wrong it doesn't matter, it will just show me that I'm doing it wrong. I want to see how well this masking tape performs over a sharp right angle. The first paint to use is the red and yellow mix. This is Phoenix Precision Paints Buffer Beam Red and Phoenix Precision Paints Signal Yellow. Time now to paint in the small yellow lines using a much smaller brush. I wasn't taking too much care when I was doing this because I just want to see whether it works. I'm being very careful with this yellow paint not to touch the other. Here's the rear edge and as you can see I didn't stick the masking tape down properly so when I do it for real I'll take extra special care in this area. Here's a second yellow line using the one shot yellow. I think possibly I'm applying the paint a bit too thick. Maybe what I should do is put a thinner coat of paint on, wait a while till it goes tacky and quickly overcoat it, I don't know. I'll try that on the next test. I think I'm also removing the masking tape very early, although I was once told that if you're painting lines, do not let the paint dry, because otherwise when you pull the masking tape off, you can get a raggy edge. If you look at the top yellow line, I made a mistake. I didn't actually paint the yellow right up to the piece of masking tape, but at least I won't do this again on the next test. When I hold the test sample against the traction engine, as you can see, the yellow lines are far too thick. I may even have to improvise to get the lines the right thickness by using multi-layers of this tape. We shall see. This first test was encouraging. The paint looks a little bit uneven, but as it dried, it got better. A video about painting wouldn't be complete without a gratuitous shot of the paint drying, so here it is. That's it for this episode. I'd like to say as always, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.